Mr. Toto, we are recording. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bloom. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday, January 5th, 2022 Board of Education meeting. Um, before we, um, well, first I'll take a motion uh, to go into public session. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I do wanna take a moment um, to uh, just let the community know why we're going virtual tonight. There are uh, quite a number of board members that are either quarantined or at home awaiting COVID test results. And if we would have gone live in person, we would not have had a quorum. So as a board, instead of canceling our meeting, we decided this evening that since the governor's executive order is still allowing board meetings to be virtual, we chose to go virtual this evening. It's something that we have not done um, at all during this current school year. And our intention is to be live and back in person at our February board meeting. So at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Um, Dr. Bloom. <coughs> oh, sorry, roll call. <laughs> Ms. Mione? Ms. Mione, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you do Can the you roll call? Me? Yes. Ready for the roll call? Yes. Yes. Okay, Mr. Toto? Here. Ms. Hoffman? Here. Mr. Curcio? Here. Mr. Leader? Here. Ms. Hansen? Here. <coughs> Dr. Bloom? Here. Mr. Volz? Here. That's a roll call. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Leone. Good evening and uh, happy new year. Um, as I said in my letter this afternoon, I, I just want to take a moment to thank our administrators and staff who volunteered to hand out uh, home test kits yesterday evening. Um, we handed out over 700 kits, um, and we hope that this will be helpful to our community uh, during this current surge in cases. Um, due to the number of cases from the outside, we are experiencing an unprecedented uh, staffing shortage uh, with over today 80 staff members out and uh, currently hundreds of students who are either in quarantine or absent. Um, our administrative team is focused on doing everything we can to keep schools open for in-person instruction. Um, we do need help. Um, and so to minimize quarantines in school, uh, we're just asking, please, if your child is sick, please don't send them. Uh, if they're awaiting a PCR test, please don't send them. And while it's certainly not going to eliminate the need to quarantine, um, it definitely helps us uh, to avoid many of the in-class quarantines uh, that we're seeing. Um, if anyone has any questions about support, um, please review my letter from earlier today. Um, in addition, our team is here to assist you and your family in any way possible. Um, as a reminder, there's a new form to use that was sent out this afternoon. It's also a pop-up on the website when you go to uh, franklinsquare.k12.ny.us. Um, and any positive cases or exposures, you can uh, enter on that form, or you can still email COVID-19 at franklinsquare.k12.ny.us. And certainly if you have any questions or concerns or need immediate assistance, uh, you can call 516-428-6995. Um, so we asked this evening that anyone that had a question to please uh, send it to us. Um, in advance. Uh, we did have one question this evening from Mrs. Gelosa. Um, she asked, uh, will you be discussing the new orders from uh, Mr. Blakeman? Um, he is not enforcing masks. So um, as we've discussed previously, uh, we are required to follow the New York State Department of Health regulations. Um, while it is true that this has been discussed as it relates to businesses, um, this would not apply to schools 
as the governor and the New York State Education Department um, still have the ability to shut us down, take away grants, and state aid should we not follow the regulations. Um, until this latest surge, we've done everything we can as a school district to have a normal year, including working with the PTAs and buildings to bring in arts and education programs, uh, field trips, allowing class parents and guest readers to help out in the buildings, class parties, events and fundraisers, new programs, and so much more. Uh, we understand the frustration and want nothing more than for things to get back to normal. And we will continue to do everything we can to bring that to fruition. Um, some things we'll be able to do on our own once things improve in the next few weeks, and other things will have to wait until we have approval from New York State. So that was it on uh, the questions. Um, I'm now going to pivot um, to an exciting presentation about all of our new programs as discussed. Um, as such, I will turn the program over to Ms. Gallagher, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, and a team of presenters who will be introduced momentarily. So Ms. Gallagher. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bloom. I'm just going to uh, pull up the presentation. Okay, thank you everybody. Can you hear me, Dr. Bloom? Yes. Okay, great. I'll just get to the beginning of the presentation. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Good evening. Um, we are pleased that you're joining us tonight. I'd like to begin tonight's presentation about the highlights of our new positions by first thanking Dr. Bloom and the Board of Education for your support of these new positions. Without the support, we would not be able to bring exciting initiatives and programs to our students. We're also extremely fortunate to have innovative and enthusiastic professionals working with our students. Tonight, you will learn more about the programs that they are facilitating. We have an amazing lineup for you tonight over our two new social workers, Rosie Carino and Christina Luca. We have our differentiation teacher, Maggie Titler, who is in charge of the Compass program and Math Olympiads, Kelly Dedino, our literacy coach, as well as our three math specialists, Ms. Lauren Sink at John Street School, Mrs. Debbie Dilfey at Washington Street School, and Mrs. Karen Landsman at Pope Street School. And also Dr. Taylor and Dr. Mike Mariquin have been integral uh, partners in creating this presentation tonight and working behind the scenes, uh, managing the PowerPoint slides as well. So at this point, I will turn it over to our presenters. We have first up our social workers, Rosie Carino and Christina Luca. Hi everyone, thank you for having us this evening. My name is Christina Luca. I am the school social worker at Polk Street School and John Street School. I am here with my colleague, Rosie Carino, the school social worker at Washington Street School and John Street School. Our role as school social workers is to work together with administrators, teachers, staff, the community and parents in order to support the homeschool connection. Hi, this is Rosie Carino and some of the work that Christina and I have been involved in include building level support which span across a few areas whether it's providing non-mandated counseling, connecting families or school initiatives. We've had such great opportunities to collaborate with so many people 
In terms of student support, we've worked with classrooms as a whole, working on coping skills or socialization skills. We've worked with small groups and even one-to-one -one work with students focusing on individualized concerns, which might be anxiety or managing family dynamics. We've done some family outreach and have been a contact person for families who are going through challenging times. And within our buildings, we've worked towards greater initiatives. We've been doing push-in presentations for Aaron's Law for grade six, K through six. The presentations have focused on healthy relationships, safety rules, and identifying trusted adults. And the Franklin Square round of applause continues to be so rewarding. This has been an opportunity for our students to acknowledge their teachers by scanning QR codes throughout our buildings and writing what they appreciate about them. And the teachers have been getting certificates from the students, which has been so sweet. Throughout the year, we have been promoting social emotional learning through our school-wide initiatives our Lions Quest curriculum, and by providing specific support to classrooms through push-in presentations. Hi everyone, this is Ms. Titler, um, Ms. Maggie Titler speaking. Um, the next program that I would like to present is our Compass program. Uh, this was the first year that we rolled it out, uh, and it is a program that is offered bi-weekly to students in all three schools, mostly students in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade at John Street School. Uh, it is primarily focused on problem-based and project-based learning opportunities, which is usually uh, in the form of students trying to solve some sort of meaningful problem. The units are based in engineering design, uh, which that process usually can stretch. Uh, it, it, um, there's a variety of steps that students will follow in it. So the first one is usually analyzing a problem, uh, evaluating designs, and then eventually trying to actually build them. Um, and so students have been doing a really nice job so far in all of the grade levels, doing a lot of um, troubleshooting and trying to avoid obstacles, predicting them before they actually encounter them during their building stage. Uh, all of the builds usually include specifications, things that need to be included in their design, as well as constraints, which is often in the form of restrictions in both time and resources. Um, it gives an opportunity to students to dig deeper into grade level content, but also to excel beyond grade level content when appropriate. For fourth grade, our first unit was talking about sensory receptors. So the students built their background knowledge um, on sensory receptors that both we have and other organisms. Uh, it gave students an opportunity to construct a model where um, it was intended to be given to an owl in order to enhance its ability to see in order to compensate for not being able to hear as well. Um, and students were able to design their models with different obstacles in mind. They came up with uh, the fact that they'd have to prepare for inclement weather. Uh, the weight and the impact on the owl's center of gravity, the comfort, and possibly the need to maintain the device's functionality. The fifth grade, on the other hand, was given a chance to um, try to build a, an outdoor structure that they would be able to use in order to eat lunch outside for um, more days, even when it was raining, especially in the time of COVID. This was a meaningful project for them. Um, and so they were able to explore scale and proportions. We did a lot of measuring um, and then uh, um, scaling down uh, both in customary and metric units, kind of comparing which ones were more appropriate for the purpose at hand. Um, and then they came up with their restrictions, which were they were limited in resources. Um, they also had to avoid the accumulation of water and avoiding the ground moisture that might result as uh, inclement weather rolls in. And then finally, sixth grade, their first unit was talking about um, the ability to create a floating barge and a space to protect local fauna, um, both protect and help them survive and thrive uh, in case of local flooding. And so this was a way to talk about um, some of our endangered species and what happens when things cannot be 
uh, preserved within the environment. Um, students did a lot of research on metals so that they can find something that wouldn't rust in their design, uh, especially if it was given extended okay. exposure to one. salt water. Um, they also looked into proportions, self-sustaining ecosystems with uh, biotic and abiotic features uh, and current market prices, et cetera. Uh, and finally, the students were asked to make sure that it would not break down over time and maintain both consistent temperature and moisture so that it'd be best for all of the organisms involved, as well as um, provide the appropriate nutrients for the plants on board without having the ability to root into the ground. So that was our COMPASS program. Um, we also have been offering math Olympiads, which we have done in the past, and this year we have extended it. Um, I have become the primary instructor for math Olympiads. So um, it is an international program. It teaches multiple strategies for out of the box problem solving. In other words, although students are learning in the classroom across the district, so many strategies to solve um, using step by step processes, math Olympiads often presents slightly out of the box strategies and questions that are a bit challenging um, in the sense that sometimes it's applying math that they are just on the cusp of learning, but it also gives them an opportunity to solve it in ways that they already know. So if students haven't learned division, they might use um, repeated addition or repeated multiplication in order to find an answer, whereas some of the older students who have spent a lot of time using division might be able to use that instead. Um, so it gives students a cool opportunity to use the strategies they want to to try to solve these problems. Um, it definitely strengthens their problem solving skills and gives them a chance to use those strategies. We are, for the most part, um, offering the fourth through sixth division for fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. Uh, Math Olympiads does offer two separate divisions. So this is the younger division. They also have an upper, uh, a middle grade division, which is a six through eight. Um, and then finally, they are able to practice a variety of subjects that they learn in the classroom and kind of reinforcing those skills and maybe learning beyond um, what their grade level is teaching them. And so we do a lot of algebra, prat pattern recognition, division, multiplication, fractions, decimals, equivalent fractions, and more. Uh, and next up is our literacy, one of our literacy coaches, or sorry, our literacy coach, uh, Kelly Didino. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And um, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. Um, my name is Kelly Didino, and I am the literacy coach for the district. Um, as a literacy coach, I collaborate with teachers to create a professional community that shares and fosters best practices in literacy instruction. Our community views best practices as dynamic, ever-growing, and based on powerful evidence of children's achievement. So uh, our work began in August um, when our kindergarten and first grade teachers um, met with Ina Martinez, the literacy consultant for our district, to have professional conversations about effective literacy instruction. Um, and the belief in the power of reading to and with children is a universal truth in this district. And beyond. Um, with that, the district decided to purchase some components of the Fountas and Pinnell, cla Pinnell classroom. Um, the Fountas and Pinnell classroom is a cohesive multi-text approach to literacy instruction, and it is designed to support whole group, small group, and independent learning opportunities through the use of rich, culturally diverse, authentic texts. So each KM1 classroom received an interactive read aloud kit, which consists of 125 authentic picture books, a shared reading kit, which is 65 big books and a six pack set for each um, matching little books and also a benchmark assessment kit. So this totals 4,690 books unpacked, organized and delivered to each K in one classroom. And oh. so that's okay. <laughs> and so uh, for uh, with that came professional development, which is um, ongoing, but together with our literacy consultant, Ian Martinez, we have been working in our KM1 classrooms to provide comprehensive ongoing training in the implementation of the interactive read aloud, shared reading, and coming soon, the benchmark assessment, which will help teachers make informed decisions about their literacy instruction that will connect assessment to responsive teaching. Thank you, Mrs. Dodino. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Sink, and I am one of the new math specialists. 
Myself, along with my colleagues, Karen Landsman and Debbie Dilthey are very excited to get to share some information about this new service for the students in our district. This year, our district implemented the Do the Math program, which was created by Marilyn Burns. Do the Math provides intervention services to students across the district for grades one through five. There is an emphasis on small group targeted instruction in foundational math skills, which students are often lacking in. Research shows that students with diverse needs succeed in learning math through explicit intentional teaching based on proven instructional strategies. Students are taught a daily skill or strategy, practice as, practice as a class, play games to support each skill, and then they complete problems to show what they know and what they have learned. Um, Do the math is composed of four strands. Our younger grades start off with number core and addition and subtraction. So that's mostly first and second and a little bit of third grade as well. Then they move into multiplication, division and fractions for a little of third, fourth and fifth graders. Each strand has three units, A, B and C, which get progressively rigorous. Each unit has a workbook and math games to play in order for students to learn and reinforce the core skill of the day. Children take assessments, so there are pre, mid, and post tests in each unit to check their understanding and to record the data and track their progress. Um, Do the Math uses instructional strategies to help at-risk and struggling students by teaching for understanding, scaffolding the content, using multiple strategies, and mathematical thinking. Do the math also help students build mathematical reasoning by routines, independent work, vocabulary and language, and assessment and differentiation. And Great. I think that about does it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sink. Um, so that's our presentation tonight. While you didn't have the luxury of seeing the smiling faces of these phenomenal professionals tonight, I hope you're able to grasp a an understanding of the robust programs that these newly created positions to our district this year have been able to offer to our students. So again, I thank you for your support. And um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. No questions. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much again for your support. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Thank you to all of you for all you do for our kids. I'm so excited that we were able to add all of these wonderful programs. Thank you, know, thank you to the board. And we certainly look forward to seeing these programs continue to grow and develop uh, over the coming years. Mr. Toto. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Thank you, team. That was, that was amazing. Um, great things happening in our district. Very proud. All right. Uh, board approval is, uh, Dr. Bloom, are you finished with your uh, superintendent's report? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, board approval is requested of the minutes of the Board of Education meeting of December 1st, 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board approval is requested of the minutes of the Board of Education meeting of December 15th, 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And board approval is requested of the minutes of the Board of Education meeting of December 20th, 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Recommended board approval is requested on the following uh, cases of the Committee on Special Education as listed. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recommended board approval is requested on the <coughs> following cases for the Committee on Preschool Special Education as listed. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recommended board approval is requested on the following case of a 504 committee. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Board approval is requested of the Treasurer's Cash Reconciliation Report and Cash Flow Statement for the period ending November 30th, 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
Uh, board approval is requested of the budget status report for the period ending November 30th, 2021. Uh, Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board approval is requested of the warrant report for November 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Board approval is requested of the appropriation status reports. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recommended board approval is requested of the trial balance report action for November 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, recommended board approval is requested of the following staff member for the ISP extended day program. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board approval is requested of the following leave replacement assignments. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Board approval is requested of the following leave of absence requests as listed. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board approval is requested of the following appointments, resignations for the ACE program. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Board approval is requested of the following civil service probationary appointments as listed. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board acceptance is requested of the following resignations as listed. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Toto. Um, yep. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Bloom. Sorry, I was my uh, my other laptop was giving me trouble. Um, so this evening, the Board um, of Education accepted the resignation of Assistant Superintendent Miss Terry Hennessy, um, who has uh, been on leave this year. Ms. Hennessy will be working with us throughout the remainder of um, this current school year on the budget. Um, but at this time, she has decided to take a step back from her current role in Franklin Square, uh, but she will definitely not be taking a step back from work. Uh, on behalf of her Franklin Square family, uh, I wanna congratulate Ms. Hennessy uh, and her family as they plan to welcome a new addition to their family. Um, we are very, very, very happy for them. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ms. Hennessy has been instrumental for the past 12 years in helping the district navigate the tough times and be able to add so many incredible programs throughout all three of our schools. So on behalf of uh, the board and I, we would like to thank her for her continued service to the district. Uh, we look forward to celebrating new beginnings as soon as it is safe to do so. So um, good luck, Ms. Hennessy. And uh, same on behalf of the administration, we uh, congratulate Ms. Hennessy and her family and uh, wish her you know, the best of luck and uh, look forward to uh, continuing to work together uh, throughout this school year. And uh, board approval is requested of the following staff member for the morning care program. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Board approval is requested of the appointment of the following members to the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee for the 22-23 budget. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Toto? Yes. Can I just ask a question about the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee? Of course. Um, will the meetings, since you know um, we are trying to go in person, are will, is it possible that some of these meetings are gonna be virtual and some of them are gonna be in person? So yes, uh, Ms. Hennessy has requested um, that they uh, be mostly virtual, um, but I am looking, you know, once things start to improve uh, and we start to uh, move back to visitors in the building again, um, you know, we will start to look at whether we can, um, do something with Ms. Hennessy to, to have the meetings in person. If not, I'm happy to have the meetings with the committee in person and Ms. Hennessy can certainly join us uh, via Zoom. So um, the answer, short answer is yes, it will, it will be a mix of virtual and in person. Thank you. Um, approval of a citizens advisory uh, policy, policy 2260 as amended. 
Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, board approval is requested of the amendment of the following board policies, 1120, 1120E1, uh, uh, 1120E2, 1130, and 1741. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, board approval is requested of the memorandum of agreement between the Franklin Square uh, Union Free School District and the Association of Registered Professional Nurses. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. Toto, can I just uh, can I say one thing uh, regarding this MOA, if, if I may? Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just thank our nurses uh, for their partnership. Um, they have truly been on the front lines with us throughout this pandemic, and there is no way we would have been able to open our doors as quickly as we did and stay open if it was not for these amazing, amazing individuals. They are in the district all hours of the day, night, answering emails, handling emergencies, uh, providing support to our programs, and caring for our kids. And we couldn't ask for uh, more amazing, fantastic people. So just want to thank them for all that they do and uh, you know, appreciate, again, the partnership. Thank you, Dr. Bloom. And thank you for, for all their dedication, their countless hours and all their hard work in making sure that our kids are, are safe and, and happy. Uh, board approval is requested of the disposal of obsolete items per the attached list. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, board approval is requested of the conference attendance for the superintendent of schools of the New York State Council of School Superintendents 2022 Winter Institute. Um, as of right now, it's in March and in person. It could end up being virtual depending on uh, the circumstances at the time. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, board approval is requested of the district's cyber liability insurance policy. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Mr. Toto and the board, this is just a renewal of our policy in the event that there is some kind of malware attack or cyber attack. Um, it, it helps us to navigate uh, those issues and, and have that support uh, if it's needed. Hopefully we will never have to use it. Thank you, Dr. Bloom. Uh, board reports, Mrs. Hoffman, anything on legislation tonight? Well, the only thing on legislation is that um, today, um, Governor Hochul gave her state of the state address. Um, this is the first time that, um, that a woman um, has been has sat in the seat of governor and the first time a woman has ever given a state of a state address. Um, I listened to the uh, to her speech during my lunch hour today. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of surprises um, because she basically has been talking about a lot of her plans anyway um, throughout, you know, the, the short time that she has been in office. Um, she did talk a lot about um, infrastructure um, which I know we're getting a lot of money from um, the federal government for infrastructure, but I was really, it was really funny because when she was talking about it, she did talk about um, repairing our infrastructure and she specifically uh, mentioned the potholes on the LIE. So I thought that was kind of <laughs> funny that she actually gave, she actually talked about the potholes on the LIE because she said as Lieutenant Governor, she actually has probably been on most of the streets in our state um and and most of the highways she's been on every highway she said in the in the, in the state and she's been on most of the streets in the in the, the go, um in our state so um the other thing she did talk a teeny bit about education but most of her conversation was really on higher education um she really wants to make the SUNY system uh, number one in the country and she has a lot of plans on how to do it um, which would be good for our kids because, you know, we prepare our kids for higher education and, you know, to be able to go into a system, a SUNY system, 
um, where our kids get the, the same education as we're providing them um, would really be very beneficial to everybody. Um, there are a lot of other things that she mentioned. It was also the first day of the legislation back in session. Unfortunately, because, and I don't know who it was, but there was one of the members had COVID, so they had to do a closed session. So really it was only the governor, the lieutenant governor, um, and I believe um, the controller and maybe one or other, one or two other people that were actually in the chamber in person at the time of the, um, the state of the state. Um, but it was a, you know, it was a good speech. Um, if you go to the New York State Governor's website, you can um, probably view it. Um, there's a live stream. I mean, a, there's a stream that you can view. Um, and um, and we'll look forward. The next couple of weeks, we'll be going back. To, they'll be going back to session. There's a lot of stuff on the docket, um, especially when it comes to kids. Um, that will be discussed. So um, I'm sure our next meeting, I'll have a lot more information and advocacy that we could be starting to do. Thank you. Well, as always, thank you, Ms. Hoffman. Thanks. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to just take a moment to wish everyone a uh, very happy and healthy new year. I hope that everyone uh, stays safe and healthy. And um, like I said earlier in, um, the opening of our board meeting. Our intention is to be back in person like we've been, um, you know, the whole uh, school year, except for this evening. Um, so I'll take a motion to adjourn um, tonight's Board of Education meeting. Move it. All in favor? Aye. Bye. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Happy New Year. Bye. Thank you.